as for that uh, Dresden business that is always cropping up, Dresden was bombed on a direct order from Eisenhower's headquarters. And when I informed the Air Ministry that I got the order to wreck Chemnitz, Leipzig, Dresden in that order, I had it confirmed in writing from the Air Ministry. But about that time, all the big shots were up in the altar, disputing with each other. And at the same time, Winston, I think, was having a somewhat bitter dispute with Archie Sinclair, the Secretary of State for Air, as to what, if anything, we were doing to help the Russians fall. And in between all this triangle emerged this order to write off Chemnitz, Leipzig, and Dresden in that order, which we did. There was one other reason for it. The intelligence side of uh, the services, and I think of the civil side, intelligence, <coughs> were all under the impression, I think they were misinformed, that the Germans were preparing an Alpine redoubt in the foothills of the Alps. And in this redoubt, the stories got wilder and wilder. They had underground factories. Uh, they were getting all their best troops moved in there, vast stores of ammunition, probably super new unheard of weapons, which would out atom the atom bomb, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when we defeated them otherwise, these picked troops were going to move back into that redoubt and carry on the war at immense cost in casualties and chaos and money to the Allies. Well, the whole thing was an absolute mare's nest. There was barely a word of truth in it. I think one or two caves were uh, used as factories, uh, but for general purposes. But there you are, Chemnitz, Leipzig, yes. and Dresden were the last through routes yes. by road and rail in which the German forces and reserves could be moved north to south or south to north, and especially back into that redoubt. Yes, I think there's, there's no doubt at all, sir.